Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. If you like the Mike Widener Show and you want to make your own podcast, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get start this edition of the mike wagner show is brought to you by picture this photo books where remembering is the key ingredient how beautiful your mother looked at her wedding and even more so at yours and who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs the holidays are coming what better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time whatever gift of grandma's recipes or just because those smiles and tears will melt your heart call karen shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books, bringing your memories back to life. They're whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call one 800 303 Three nine six zero, or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get twenty percent off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. It's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon and. Paperback and Eva. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries with two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today. Order Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Now available at Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike for the Mike Wyden Show. Powered by Soundgrab Studios. Visit online at soundgrabstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundgrab Studios is the answer. Soundgrab Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundgrabstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wyden Show. Get 20% off your first project. Soundgrab Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has got great reviews and Eve Love and enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Ford Riley, and many else. So grab your copy today for those Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, where remembering is the key ingredient. How beautifully your mother looked at a wedding, and even more so at yours. Who doesn't miss Grandma's meatballs, huh? Well, the holidays are coming, and... What's a better time to give a gift for memories that makes you laugh and cry at the same time? Whatever gift for grandma's recipes or just because those smiles and tears will just melt your heart. Call Karen Chop. Picture this photo books at 646-798-0809. That's 646-798-0809. Or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Picture this photo books. Bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show on over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter today and check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at themikewidenershow.com. Also on Amazon, 
at the Mike Wagner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, a lot of goodies and more. Also, check out the Me and Molson Zia store on Amazon for great books like Missing, Wants and Wrinkles, and great merchandise. T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, you name it, he's got. Go to Amazon.com slash Me and Molson Zia and make sure you check out all this great stuff. And also, you can also um, donate generously to the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Also on Anchor FM slash support and PayPal. And make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific author who began a writing career with a debut novel, A Cobbler's Tale in 18. And he is a well-respected and a prolific historical fiction novelist. He also earned very high praise from Kirkus, Midwest Book Review, Amazon, Goodreads, and more. And the latest novel involves paranormal fiction and centers around the mummified remains discovered by two mountain hikers in the fall of 91. We'll talk about this amazing odyssey. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful Plus Studio somewhere in New Jersey, the very multi-talented author, Neil Perry Gordon. Neil, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Well, it's good evening here in New York and New Jersey. <laughs> well, it's good everywhere. I mean, we live 24-7. I mean, you know, as we're listening, may say good evening, they may be having like, you know, Two, two in the morning, having trouble sleeping in Tokyo. So maybe a great book like yours will put him to sleep. So <laughs> let's hope it doesn't put him to sleep. <laughs> well, some could use a good story as well, too. And speaking of stories, you began your writing career with the debut novel, A Cobbler's Tale, back in 18. You're a well respected and prolific historical fiction novelist. Um, you earned very high praise from Kirkus, Midwest Book Review, Amazon, Goodreads, and more. And your latest novel is a paranormal fiction that centers around the mummified remains discovered by two mountain hikers in the fall of 91. And we'll talk about your book, um, Otzi's Odyssey, The Troubled Soul for of a Neolithic Iceman. And before getting to all that, along with your other books, A Cobbler's Tale, Moonflower, The Righteous One and More. Tell us how I first got started, Neil. Well, you know, I was wanting to always to be a writer. So uh, I... I I, I told my great grandparents' story in my first book. I am I embellished it, and made them much more courageous than they really were, though I never really knew them. So, mm-hmm. but, you know, it, it still was a good story. I just embellished it, and that was my first shot. I was wanted to see if I actually had an ability of, of being a storyteller, of being a novelist, and um, and it went well. Um, it was got a lot of excellent reviews, and the first the first one, of course, was when I sent it off to my editor and crossing my fingers that when it came back, because she was really the first person of any caliber to read it. And, and she says, yeah, you're a writer. So that was it. That's how it began. Wow, it's amazing. And what was that one precise moment that simply said to you, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? It was, that was the moment because it was that I was waiting for her to say it's good or it's not good. And it was I was really I really was focused on that moment and saying, okay, this is one of those times when, you know, it's going to give you a direction in your life. So I think by her, uh, her praise for it, uh, the very, very beginning was what I needed. And then the next big moment was getting my first public review. Mm -hmm. Once the book was out and then I had to wait for my review from the public, uh, from someone I didn't know. And then those started rolling in and then, you know, first, you know, not everyone was a, was the, was five stars, but you know, out of a uh, hundred uh, reviews I have now, about 80% are five stars. So I, I got a, I got a good following. Wow. That is amazing. And uh, who are some of your favorite writers and authors growing up? Oh, of course, Stephen King is everybody's favorite. John Irving. I love Steinbeck. This, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds. So, um, you know, I like, I like good storytellers. I like people who make you think. I like people who grab you into a story and you're so excited to be there and sad to see it end. Um, so I write with that uh, in mind because I want people to be excited when they read. I want them to be entertained. I want them to learn something, be surprised, um, as I am when I read my favorite types of books. Hmm. That's rather interesting. What's your favorite Stephen King novel? Well, it has to be The Stand, I think. Um, I read that when it first came out. We were in college. I remember we were sitting in the dorm room. I went to Pace University down in New York City. My room overlooked the Brooklyn Bridge. And every, all the guys on the floor read the stand. We passed it around. We talked about it. And then one night, we all got the courage to try to give Stephen King a call. <laughs> so we never actually got through, but I think we talked about it more than, you know, after we, then we tried. It was very anticlimactic, but it was lots of fun thinking what we we're going to say to him 
at that time. And then we, we thought of him as a, this amazing writer back in 1980, but back then he was just really starting out. And I, I listened to his biography. He has a book called On Writing, which is for writers and how he writes his process and a little bit about his history. Mm-hmm. So when he talks about when he wrote The Stand, it was so interesting because he really wasn't as known as we are, as we know him now. But us as college students revered him in such a grand way. We thought of him as he is now, but he really wasn't. So that would have been a, a moment where we probably could have called him, got him on the phone and had a good conversation. Huh. That's really interesting. And uh, what were you studying at uh, Pace University at that time? Marketing. Oh, really? Marketing. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I have a degree in marketing, yeah. Okay. And, and then uh, how, how'd you manage to uh, segue from marketing over to writing? You know, say you, you went to school in 1980 and then you also wrote your book in 18. So, you know, tell us about the timeline between that time and uh, well, up till 18. Yeah, it's quite a few years in between. <laughs> um, so I've been in the uh, window covering drapery and upholstery business, uh, basically almost pushing in my fourth decade. So um, <clears throat> writing became a second career. Um, later in life, uh, I'm still top of my game in my interior design career. But what's nice about writing is something I could do when I retire from my, my my professional business and continue with that. I think that's something I like. I like it a lot. I like the process. I just like the the ease of writing because you know if you wanted to be creative, you have lot. You have a couple of different choices. You could be a sculptor. You could be a painter. You could be a musician. And I tried painting. Painting was a pain in the neck. You got to clean up. Every, we had done every and every day. I mean, it was like a massive time to clean up. So, we, mm-hmm. in writing, it's easy. You have a you have a computer, laptop. You got internet to connect to Google for research. Um, it's a wonderful way of, of of being creative. And I like the the creative aspect of it because it's I write for myself, so it's totally free. It's totally a pure creative process. I'm not writing for an audience. Um, <clears throat> though I have to say that, uh, I'm, I'm tending to learn how to write to an audience now after my eight, seven published books, two more on, on its way. So, um, my new book that I'm writing after Utsi is coming out will be the third part of a trilogy. <clears throat> I have the first two books out, uh, um, Hope City and Cape Nome. And my th- new book will be called Denali. And that'll be a trilogy because from what I hear, people like to read series of books mm. that helps sell books is when you write them in a series so this will be my first series will be a trilogy and that'll be out sometime next year and, and what's the name of the series in the first book the first book is called hope city it's about the gold rush in alaska in 1898 mm-hmm. and then we go to 1900 to nome alaska where the the next big gold rush moved to where my next book is at actually the audio book of um of uh, Cape Nome will be out this fall as well. So I, all my books are on audio. This one is being recorded on audio now. So it's a very exciting story. You know, back in 1900 in Nome, Alaska, Wyatt Earp was up there. Huh? Wyatt Earp and his wife Josephine they actually uh, were partners in a in a in a saloon a casino called the Dexter. So I weave Wyatt Earp into that story, which is kind of fun, uh, and the whole gold rush in, in Nome, which was a real interesting uh, time to be there in 1900. And then the third story ends up in, it's called Denali, but it's a little bit more, uh, it's less about the gold and, and more about the, the characters at this point. We're so in depth with the characters. So uh, that is still in the process of being created about 25,000 words in. Oh, wow. Okay. When can we expect uh, Denali to come out to uh, complete the trilogy? I'm expecting it sometime at the beginning of next year. Next year. Okay. So you got Hope City, Kate Nome and Denali as a trilogy. I am so looking forward to it. And I think I read something about uh, similar where Wired Up and his wife was up in Alaska. And I think they were part of the gold rush, part of the salute and everything. And um, and I think there's a really good story that came out of it. So that sounded really familiar. And I'm looking forward to reading that. And we'll also talk about um, some of the other works like The Bomb Squad, Cobbler's Tale, Moonflower, and more along with them. Bootsy's Odyssey. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Soundgrab Studios. Visit online at soundgrabstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundgrab Studios is the answer. Soundgrab Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. 
That's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has got great reviews. In Evil Love and endorsed by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forrest Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, where remembering is the key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at a wedding and even more so yours. Who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs, huh? Well, the holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift for remembrance that might make it laugh and cry at the same time? What if a gift for grandma's recipes or just because those smiles and tears, well, they'll just melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw. Picture this photo books at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Picture this photo books. Bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. And don't forget to check out Mike Wagner's show on 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Wagner show on Instagram and Twitter today. Check out the Mike Wagner show merchandise at the Mike show.com. Also on Amazon.com at the Mike Wagner show podcast, t-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, and more. Make sure you order today. And don't forget to check out the Me and Molson Zia store on Amazon for great books like Missing, Wants, and Wrinkles. And for cool merchandise, make sure you check out the Me and Molson Zia store on Amazon. And also support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal at the Mike Wagner Show or Mike Wagner VoiceOver. And also support us at themikewagnershow.com. Click on Donate and make sure you give generously today. We're here with... Um, Author um, Neil, pa- P- Neil Perry Gordon here on the Mike Wagner Show we talked a little bit about uh, Hope City, Cape Norm, and also Denali as, um, as uh, completing the trilogy. And uh, before we talk about um, Bootsy's Honesty, the troubled soul of um, Neolithic Iceman, you also had some books out there called A Cobbler's Tale, Moonflower, The Righteous One, and more. And um, well, first of all, let's start with The Bomb Squad, Clash of Patriots, book one, and uh, tell us more about that. Bomb Squad is historical fiction, it takes place in New York City during uh, World War I, actually right before the America gets involved in the war. So we, yeah. we, we, the war broke out, we, were, we still were neutral, we didn't get involved. Um, but we had a lot of Germans in the New York metropolitan areas, particularly on the Jersey side of the river. And they got stuck here during the war. So war broke out, they were, they were a lot of Germans were here, they ended up being um, stuck in mostly on Jersey City and Hoboken. In fact, there's still a big German population there now. But um, we had a lot of issues, uh, spies. We had bombings going off. So the U.S. government, um, it was we didn't have a, um, a CIA back then, and our intelligence wasn't as it is today. So the British Secret Service were really the the premier intelligence organization in the world. So they sort of established this bomb squad in New York City. And my character, my lead character, plays the lead detective of the bomb squad. And he has to find out what's going on with these bombings going on uh, in the New York, New Jersey area and elsewhere. Um, meanwhile, the so he's the uh, the protagonist. The antagonist is also a, uh, is a German national, but, but American. Um, but he's loyal to Germany and he's a, he's a spy. So he was two men, um, both are, were born in Germany, but both are American. One's patriotic to the American cause, one's patriotic to the German cause. And uh, that's where the, uh, the excitement takes place. Hmm. That's really interesting as well, too. And um, it also talks about uh, ha- having, um, having uh, the guy um, Schwartz as well, too, hell bent to strike the Americans from entering the war and um, everything else. And also you had a cobbler's tale, which is also... Um, a, you know, Jewish immigrants' uh, story of survival, Eastern New York, New York's Lower East Side. And, um, you know, tell us a bit about that one. That's the first book called The Cobbler's Tale. It takes place um, also before World War I breaks out, but it's about this Jewish family living in southern Poland, which was called Galicia at the time, part of the Austrian Hungarian Empire. The father decides he wants to immigrate to America. Uh, and very typical at that time, the men would go first, try to establish um, 
a good uh, connection there, get a job, you know, get a place to live, you know, make, make sort of relationships and then bring the family over. So that's what um, my main character did, Pincus. Uh, Pincus decided to come over and left his wife, who was pregnant at the time, and three children back in Poland. And while he's here as a cobbler trying to get himself established, war breaks out in Europe. And he was supposed to go back within a year to get them, but it's now too late. They're stuck right in the middle of a war zone, a very bloody war zone between the Russians and the Germans and the, and the uh, Austrians. Um, so uh, it, it becomes an adventure story. He goes back and he tries to save him during war. At me time here in the Lower East Side of New York, at that time he's involved, gets himself involved with the wrong people, with some gangsters, and he has some unfortunate circumstances. Um, I also have um, their son, uh, Moshe, is what's called a tzaddik. And he is only 36 tzaddik on the earth at any one time. So he has this, this mystical ability of making people feel at ease when he meets them, mm. uh, so especially at their time of just as about to be, to pass, about to, to, about to die. So he has this magical ability, they, they call it a hand of God. So I have this metaphysical element to, to it as well, and, and it's historical fiction of where it takes place. And you can learn about what life was like in the Lower East Side at that time, as, as well as um, an adventure story of uh, a family looking out for each other. Hmm. That's really interesting as well, too. And so far, if you had um, a, a tale of uh, Jewish immigrants, uh, Eastern Europe, New York's Lower East Side, and also, um, you know, in New York City as well, too, with the uh, Germans, and you've got some... Uh, Really good, interesting. Let's talk about Moonflower as well, too, a 17th uh, century tale of a young man's search for the great spirit. And uh, tell us about that. This seems to be a, a nice break from uh, the, the two books you talked about. Well, Moonflower is also historical fiction, though it takes place in the, in the late seventh, uh, 17th century, um, right after the English takeover from the Dutch. So my story is about a 17-year-old boy, uh, a Dutch boy who ends up uh, living with the Indians in upstate New York. And um, him and his friend, who's the, the chief's son, the same age, they go on their, their quest, you know, the rite of passage quest. And um, he takes the moonflower. And the moonflower is a plant, a hallucinogenic plant that the shaman gives. And then if you take the moonflower, you forget everything you ever knew up to that point. You basically oh. wash your memory clear. So before he takes it, the shaman says, what I want you to do is I want you to write everything you remember about your life down. He gives him a, he gives him a parchment and a quill. And he says, just write down your biography because you're going to forget everything that you know up to this point. So this is the part of the rite of passage. So he takes the moonflower, he forgets everything, but he has this document. It's just basically words. He has no emotional connection to this document. And then he goes on this quest, this epic quest that takes him across New England. It takes him to Amsterdam down to the slave coast of Africa, across to the slave mart in Charleston, South Carolina, up through Philadelphia during the time of William Penn, and then back again. And it's, it's this, you know, the whole journey is a rite of passage. It's the story about this, this young boy. Um, and again, it's mixing historical fiction, it's mixing um, adventure story, as well, I have, have a, I even have a monster in it, uh, which is more of a symbolic type of a monster that he encounters as part of his part of his quest. Hmm. And what type of monster is that? It's called a Wendigo. Wendigo. Yeah. So this, and if you read the book, I give a nice description of what the Wendigo looks like. But he's a very tall, elongated, uh, um, horrible looking figure um, that basically represents evil throughout the story. So, uh, again, it's a, it's a good versus evil type adventure story. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was my second book that I wrote. That's interesting, too. And uh, getting back to the cobbler's journey as well, too, you've got The Righteous One, A Cobbler's Journey into the Dream World and Beyond Book Two. And um, this seems to continue in the um, New York region. And uh, tell us a bit more about that and the continuation of A Cobbler's Journey. Right. So a Cobbler's Tale is the first book and The Righteous One was my third book. And it's a continuation of, the, of A Cobbler's Tale. It takes place now my character who was in the first book, Moshe, who was the Tzaddik, he's he was only 10, 11 years old in the first book. Now he's 60 years old. Wow. And so now we see him living in the Bronx. He owns a cobbler shop. He's he, he taken over after his father and, who, who, and, his, and his grandfather before him were all cobblers. So he's taken over. He has a nice little cobbler shop in the Bronx. 
And uh, he has this power um, and people know about it because there's only 36 Sadiq in the world and they know that there was one in New York because he had this famous encounter when he was a young boy. And um, so he sought out because he has to fight the, 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 uh, the evil uh, character uh, that, ma- that is the opposite of the Tzaddik, which is called the Rasha. Hmm. So, you know, everything in life has balance. So we have, we have good and evil. We have the Tzaddik, we have the Rasha. So the Rasha is causing havoc and evil throughout the Bronx. And so he is brought to, to fight the Rasha. So he's sort of the reluctant hero in the story. Um, and actually got a lot of good reviews. Um, that it was not, it's not a uh, historical fiction. It's really what I call metaphysical fiction. Um, sort of what Utsi's Odyssey is as well, a medical fit, metaphysical fiction. You mentioned it's paranormal, but I think metaphysical is a better description of the genre. Um, so I like that, you know, talking about the unknown in my stories. I try to bring that in as much as I can um, because it's, a, it's an opportunity to be creative. It's an opportunity to allow the reader's mind to take a journey with you. And as long as you make it plausible, if you make the reader think, yeah, okay, I can buy this, even though it's way out there, uh, then you're telling a good tale. And it sounds like those are really good tales as well, too, Neil. And uh, before we talk about Sadie Sin, um, how'd you first uh, get involved? What got you interested in the metaphysical and the uh, paranormal? Well, um, I like the metaphysical. I've always liked the metaphysical area more. So, you know, the, the paranormal, not so much, but the metaphysical, yes. I just, I like look making myself look into the unknown i like it because i think writing for me is my spiritual practice um and as a spiritual practice you want to be able to you know pierce the veil between what we see and and the rest of the spiritual world um and writing is a good way of doing that because you know we you know people today are so cocooned uh, in our materialism and, you know, and, and, and the world, the cities that we live in and the worlds that we live in that we're not open, like the indigenous people were open um, many years ago because they were one with nature. We've disconnected ourselves so much. And so that, that, that uh, urge to reconnect with nature, to rewild ourselves, um, and, and what that gives you is not just, you know, a, a physically healthy body, but and a mentally healthy body, but also spiritually healthy. So we, you know, you make that connection, you could break through those veils. Um, you know, life doesn't, our stories do not end when we die. Mm. I like that idea that our, our biographies continue. So why should our story, why should that be the end? You know, there's still stories to tell. So I'm really interested in what those stories are. Um, so that's what keeps me interested in the metaphysical. And, and of course, you talk about as well, too, having the metaphysical and the paranormal interwoven into history as well, too, like with um, with with New York and also with the Germans, um, you know, being stuck in New York, uh, World War One, and also um, with the Kapler, Jewish immigrants, uh, New York's Lower East Side, and of course, the Moonflower with the Dutch and everything. And um, h- how'd you how'd you first uh, get interested in history? And how'd you discover about, um, you know, with the the or fascinating about the you know, the New Yorkers um, or with German people being in New York and uh, also, you know, the Jewish and everything. It's like, you know, the stories behind it and what got you interested? Well, I'm Jewish. I'm, you know, my grand, my grandparents, all my grandparents are Jewish immigrants. So they, but they were all children when they came here. It's the great grandparents that have the real story. I mean, those are the ones who decided we're going to pick up and we're going to, we're going to leave everything we have and everything we know, and we're going to go move to America. A lot of people did it. I mean, you know, it's millions and millions of people did it at the same time. What I what I like about historical fiction, I've always liked about it, is a it's a way to learn you know, something about history and, and and not knowing you're not learning not knowing you're learning something because it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that idea. I like the idea that we can I can read a book. Uh, and be entertained and learn something about history. So that that is very appealing to me as a reader. And, and as a writer, um, I do the same because now that I'm writing about it, I'm learning about it too. So I didn't know there were Germans in, in, in um, New Jersey during World War I until I started writing my book. And then I started doing research and went, oh, isn't that interesting? And oh, isn't that interesting? And um, because I don't write with an outline, I write um, with an idea. 
I write with mm -hmm. a concept, I write with a premise, uh, and have sort of an idea where I wanted to go, but that's all I know. So I, I write and the writing just sort of brings me to different places and surprises me. Um, and 80% of what's written when I'm done, I had no idea would have been there when I started. Maybe even more than 80%. If I had to put a number on it, probably be over 90%. Wow. Um, so, so that to me, is, I like in that process because I think if I'm surprised at the story as I'm telling it, the reader will be surprised. Mm -hmm. And of course, what's surprising as well, too, you also have Sadie Zinn, Sadie Zinn, the Zwee McDowell's um, Reign of Terror. It's about uh, a woman named Sadie. She's a Jewish in 1924 in Poland, fall in love with a handsome professor. And of course, you know, there's also with, um, you know, tra you know, trafficking going on with the women and um, an epic tale and everything else. And uh, tell us more about that. This seems like um, a, a nice different change of pace from your previous books. Well, it is a change of pace. Um, it is a historical fiction. A lot of people don't know about this, but in the 1920s, between mid-1920s and mid-1930s in Buenos Aires, Argentina, there was uh, sex trafficking going on. There were brothels, hundreds and hundreds of brothels throughout Buenos Aires were sex slaves. They had women sex slaves working there. And these were Jewish men who ran these things. And wow. they, they, got their, they got women from Poland, from uh, poor Jewish girls, from Poland going there acting as agents saying we have rich husbands in Argentina who are looking rich Jewish husbands in Argentina looking for young girls to marry them and you give up your daughter we'll take her she'll live the life of a, of a princess um, and so a lot of these families you know were very poor um, and thought okay you know give our daughter a chance meanwhile they were signing them away and giving them giving them up and they were ended up on a boats, you know, going across, uh, steamships going to Buenos Aires and, and becoming sex slaves and they could never leave. So my story is based on that premise. So I have my uh, Jewish girl in, in Warsaw, Poland, college age, and she falls in love with the college professor. And uh, he's not Jewish. So the father's like, there's no way you're marrying this man. This is not happening. And she is, you know, beside herself, of course. So um, he decides after, you know, you know, being very frustrated to sell her um, to a, this Argentinian businessman. And, and he, they don't know what they just sold her into. And off she goes. And if this is an adventure story, so of course my, my professor, my college professor has to go and rescue Sadie from these brothels. And that's Sadie's sin. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you think the uh, sex trafficking uh, situation in Argentina compares to uh, today? Well, there's, there's been there's been comparisons. So, you know, when, when I was researching the sex trafficking there, they were bringing up the Jeffrey Epstein uh, character, him and, um, and that is that woman who's associated with because uh, they were also doing they were sex trafficking as well. Different um, different setup. Both men, are dead. he was Jewish too, Jeffrey Epstein. Um, it was a horrible thing. And, and that the Jews could do with the Jews. It was disgusting that um, that that could go on, um, you know. Uh, this is a horrible thing. And, and that's one thing in history a lot of people don't know about. When I mentioned this story or they read it, they said it's a time in history no one really has uh, been aware of. Wow. Yeah. That is something. And of course, that's been going on throughout the news as well, too. And do you think um, our, our current um, system is uh, fighting uh, sex trafficking right now or are they just simply letting mm -hmm. it go? Do you think it's neutralizing or you think it's getting worse? No, no, no. It's definitely getting well listen you know, and i'm sure in some third world countries where you know um things are backwards it's, you know you, you mean you look at what's going on in in afghanistan with the taliban i mean you know women have no rights there you know they're, they're treated like they're treated terribly so you know it's all about the abuse of women you know be it sexually orientated or you know just totally um power um, so, you know, it's, it goes on. I think we're much less tolerant now in this country than we ever been in the past. Um, so that's a good thing. And we don't allow, we don't allow as, as much as uh, used to get, we used to go on. I mean, you can look at, you know, <laughs> what would happen in the, in the sixties and, you know, with how men treated women and by looking at shows like Mad Men mm -hmm. and you shake your head going, that's, how do people allow that? Um, so things have changed, but, you know, it's good to bring these things up. Uh, of what things, you know, in terms of history and, um, and show what was really going on.
Mm-hmm. And make people aware too. And that's a fantastic. You've done a great job of doing that, Neil. And where can we find all your books at? Amazon.com. You go to Amazon.com, just type in Neil Perry Gordon, and um, you'll see my library of books there. And you can okay. get them also. What's good, Mike, you could get them as an ebook, you can get them as a paperback, and they're all on audio. So if you like to listen to your books, listen, you know, books on tape type thing. Uh, all my books are on Audible, and my newest my newest Audible book is Cape Numb. That's being recorded now. And will be out probably end of this year. We're certainly looking forward to that. But we're we're going to be talking about um, Utsi's Honesty, the troubled soul of a Neolithic Iceman in just a minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at SoundCloudStudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Z of Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Also brought to you by a picture of this photo book, so remembering is a key ingredient. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit pictureofthisphotobooks.com. We'll be back with author Neil Perry Gordon of Bootsy's Odyssey. After this time, out. this edition of the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, where remembering is a key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs? The holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whatever gift of grandma's recipes, or just because, those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books, bringing your memories back to life. They're whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios if you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today mention the mike wagner show and get 20 percent off your project Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. And if there's one thing you can count on in these unpredictable times, it's that you're in good hands getting some great radio, courtesy of The Mike Wagner Show. We're back with the multi-talented author Neil Perry Gordon on The Mike Wagner Show. We uh, talked about A Cobbler's Tale, Moonflower, The Righteous One, The Bomb Squad, and a lot more. And we covered the gamut on a lot of books that are tying metaphysical, paranormal, and a lot of history that's involved. And I've learned a lot a great deal. And let's talk about your uh, latest one. We're featuring Utsi's Ansi, The Troubled Soul of a Neolithic Iceman. And uh, this took place in the fall of 91. And uh, tell us more about that. Well, he his his corpse was found in the fall of 1991. Utsi the Iceman was a is is probably one of the most famous natural mummies ever discovered. So uh, two German hikers in 1991 in the um, Italian Alps, right be, right just south of the Swiss border, uh, came across this frozen corpse in the glacier, mm. um, and it ended up being a 5,000 year old mummy. Um, he was discovered and and they found not only the mummy, but they were able to find his bow and arrows and hair uh, and his knife, uh, his boots, clothes he wore. Everything was there it was like this little time capsule in, you know, inside this glacier. Um, and also they knew what he ate in his stomach. They, will, they did tests on him, DNA tests. They found he was 5,000 years old from the Neolithic time. They looked at his fingernails and they saw how, you know, we were able to analyze his fingernails. Uh, he had tattoos on his body. Huh. So they found the tattoos. They found a arrowhead located in his shoulder. They, they, so they sort of 
try to piece back how he was killed up there, how he died. No one, of course, no one knows. Um, so he was, he is an archeological um, specimen of, of the you know, millionth degree because of, of what they were able to discover. So to me, that was very interesting. Um, and there has been some stories, some books and a couple of films here and there uh, of what Utsi's life would have been like 5,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. So, and I thought, okay, that's, that's kind of cool to think about what his life was. But I, I wrote a story uh, about not only the Iceman himself, but also the, the soul of the Iceman. Hmm. So we all have souls. Our souls move on after we pass. But Utsi's soul, for some particular reason, was tethered, was tied to the corpse for 5,000 years and only was awakened when the corpse was discovered. So that's how my book begins. It's from the point of view of the soul, observing the the hikers coming to discover the frozen ice man. Um, So now we have to figure out, as he has to figure out, why am I here? What what am I? Who am I? Am I I a person or am I just a, a thought? So I go back and forth between the modern times of him trying to look at the world, a 5,000 year old mind or a soul and the eyes of this soul looking at the modern world. How does he look at a helicopter? How, do you, how does he describe a helicopter to the, to the reader? How does he describe rooms and lights? And you know, what would a 5,000 year old man plucked from time put into the, into the modern world and how to describe these things? How would he do this? So that's, what I'm doing as, as, as a part of the story, but I'm also time going, I'm going back in time, time traveling back to his time. I'm telling his story. I'm telling a story of how he ended up there, how his soul got frozen along that uh, mountainside. Um, so I go back and forth. I tell uh, back when he, in 5,000 years ago, he's a, a leader for clan. Uh, and I, during my research, I found out that there was these, in, the, in this area, these Neolithic people lived on stilt homes in lakes. Stilt homes. Yeah, so they built stilt homes on the sides of lakes. So I made my clan live in stilt homes. Um, And this actually they were able to um, find because when these, the logs that they used to build these stilt homes eventually gave way and sunk to the lake, they're perfectly preserved in the muck because there's no oxygen down there. So they they did these dives, archaeological dives, pulled out these, these pieces of posts and figured out this is, you know, this is from 5,000 years ago. Um, and they recreated this whole idea of still tones. So I used that, which was fun. So, you know, there's some historical fiction there going on. Um, and also I go back and forth. So the things that are discovered in modern times, my soul is beginning to recognize these things and they show how they're used in the ancient times. Wow. Um, and then I have this whole thing where the reason why he ended up being his soul being frozen there for 5,000 years because he, he ended up selling his soul um, to the devil. But there's no devil per se in the story, but he, he sells it to a soul hunter. Uh, and part of his uh, quest to redeem himself is that he, he sold his soul. He must now go to Gahana, which is hell, um, and go through the four layers of hell. Uh, to redeem himself. And so that's part of the adventure as he goes down deeper and deeper and deeper um, through these through these different realms. Uh, I talk about that in, in as part of the adventure story. Um, so yeah, it, it, it goes, it, it weaves in contemporary times to ancient times. It really brings a lot of the idea of the metaphysical world, of the, of the journey of the soul, um, of looking into the spirit world, of what happens uh, to us after we pass. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really difficult book to write. My books I could really write quickly mostly, but this book took maybe four times as long because I'm writing about things that are very unusual. You know, I'm not writing about, you know, just, you know, historical fiction things, you know, getting on a steamship and coming across the ocean and, you know, having interaction at the, with, the, with the pickle man selling pickles on the side street and on Grand. This is talking about very... Um, you know, spiritual things. So it, it, it was a, it's a hard, um, a hard story to tell, but very gratifying. It is very gratifying indeed, the way you talked about Uti. And how'd you uh, 
first uh, get interested in Utsi and um, you know, starting the journey? How did you first get interested? Well, um, my son was into Utsi. Um, he's, he was, from an archaeological point of view, he found it very interesting. So he first introduced him to me. And if you, if you go on and you Google Utsi, O-T-Z-I, Utsi the Iceman, you'll come up with a, a ton of stuff. There's a museum in Tyrol, um, in Tyrol, Italy, where uh, you can go see the mummy and you see all these artifacts they found. My son Max went there um, right before COVID broke out in February of, of 19. Wow. So he, 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 and he went up and visited that museum. Um, and there's the mummy. He's there, um, the mummy they found. You can visit him. He's in this perfectly temperature controlled a room. You can look through a little window and, and see him there. Uh, and all his things are there too, the real things. You know, his arrows, the bow he used, his boots. Um, very sophisticated. You know what's interesting that I found, Mike, at that time? And you, and you would think that, you know, 5,000 years ago, we were very, very primitive. Mm -hmm. You would think that, you know, we were a caveman, right? But what you learn about in, in, in this book and, 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 and by the life of Utsi was they were much more sophisticated than you realized. I mean, they had, you know, they had boots, they had pants with buttons on the boots to keep the snow from going in. Um, they had certain technology with their bows and arrows and how they made things. You know, of course, technology was limited, but they, they, they used what they had very clever. Um, mm. And they were smart people and they lived pretty well, um, considering. I mean, they had nice lives. I mean, they lived on the side of a lake. They were uh, farmers. They raised... Uh, livestock. Um, they were hunters and gatherers and foragers. Um, and just like the indigenous people here did, you know, up, upstate New York, you had, before the English came and, and destroyed everything, um, the indigenous people had nice lives. Um, they lived peacefully and, and uh, you know, I'm sure there was, there was those wars with, with neighbors, but um, most, most ways, they, a lot of tribes never, never saw a battle at all. So a lot of these things, you know, you think of thousands of years ago, it's like, oh, who could live like, like love like that? And almost as idyllic, um, you know, in a romantic way. Hmm. That is very fascinating. I love to hear more about uh, Utsi as well. And uh, where can we find uh, Utsi's Asi at? We won't find it yet. It's not going to be out until probably, I'm guessing, late October, early November. But it's, it's, being, it's my editor now. So we'll be, we'll be going through the editing process. The book cover is designed. You can see the book cover on my website, neilperrygordon.com, right on the homepage. You'll see what it looks like. Um, so yes, I got the book cover design. It's a very cool book cover. Um, I'm really pleased with it. And so, yeah, so it'll be sometime this um, the latest November, um, but you'll find it on Amazon. We're certainly looking forward to it, and it's been amazing. We're here with uh, author Neil Perry Gordon here on the Mike Wagner Show with The Cobbler's Tale, Moonflower, Righteous One, and more. Neil, a very big thank you for your time. You've been totally terrific, and I learned a lot from you. And just a few more things, um, you know, besides the things you talked about, uh, this is coming up, that's coming up. What else can we expect from me in, in 2021 and beyond, Neil? Well, as I mentioned before, we have the, the third part of the trilogy, the Goldfield trilogy of um, Hope City, Cape Nome, and Denali. So that, that's as far as I can tell you right now, because I'm editing Utsi's Odyssey, I'm writing Denali, and what's next, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> we'll be surprised uh, next year as well, too. And who do you consider biggest influence in a career, Neil? Um, as a writer? Um, it can be anything in general. Well, I mean, I've been influenced lately by Jack London, the writer, and I and actually I talk about him a lot in my books, uh, especially Hope City. He's a character, a small role character, but he's been very influential, very interesting writer, interesting guy, led an interesting life. Okay. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? <laughs> well, best advice is to... Uh, to look within and try to and try to see beyond you know the technology that's encompassing us try to break through connect with nature mm. connect with nature rewilding yourself that to me is is the best advice because i know what happens when we when we end up 
locking ourselves off into that into that other world. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good point as well, too. Once again, uh, we're with well-respected and prolific historical uh, fiction novelist and author Neil Perry Gordon here on the Mike Widener Show. Neil, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your books? Two places, you go to amazon.com, type in Neil Perry Gordon, or go to neilperrygordon.com and you can learn more. We certainly will do so. Once again, Neil, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely terrific. Learned a lot. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. You've been absolutely terrific. And we definitely wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Picture this photo books where remembering is the key ingredient. Preserving memories, keeping the memories of your loved ones alive as they reach in and touch your heart, how beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. The holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time. Whether it's a gift of past holidays, grandma's recipes, long ago moments, or just because. Those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809. Once again, that's 646-798-0809. Or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.